In front of me are three bifacial solar panels. Two of them are premium panels made by Bouge RV, and one here is a budget panel that I purchased on Amazon. I'm gonna take you through the data from a series of tests that I put these solar panels through, and in the end, we should be able to determine if it's worth spending the extra money for the premium panels, or if you should stick with a more budget panel like this one. For full disclosure, I did purchase this HQST panel and the rack that I have it on from Amazon, so I paid for that. But Bouge RV sent me these two panels and the tilt mounts that I have them mounted to for free in exchange for this review video. But with that being said, I'm going to let the data speak for itself here. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. Okay, let's start with this first panel. This is an HQST bifacial solar panel that I bought on Amazon on sale for $52. That comes out to just 52 cents per watt. That's an incredible deal here. And um, the manufacturer states that it has up to 25% efficiency. So that's impressive. However, do note that this does have the older Kirk cell technology, not the Topcon technology like over here. And I'll talk about this more later, but there are only nine bus bars per solar cell here as compared to the 16 bus bars per solar cell that you have here on the more premium Bouge RV panels. We're gonna see if that actually makes a difference when it comes to performance. But with that being said, I wanted to compare these more premium panels to this budget panel and see if it's worth spending the extra cost for these panels over here. Now, earlier I mentioned that these two panels had the latest Topcon cell technology, whereas this had the older Perk technology. Just in short, I'm not going into in depth here, but just in short, these Topcon panels should have higher efficiency and better performance characteristics than the Perk cell technology. That's achieved with a more advanced passivation layer, which allows for a higher efficiency when it comes to capturing the light. And in addition, it should have better hot weather performance with the Topcon cell technology. But once again, I wanna see what the real world actually says in my real world test results. One more difference that I wanna point out before I move over to the test results is something I mentioned earlier. I mentioned that this HQST panel had nine bus bars per solar cell. And if you look across here, you can easily see that. You can see the separate solar cell here. And then if you count the bus bars here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you can see that the sections here are quite a bit larger than when you move over to these panels. So this is the 200 watt panel here. And if you look at, once again, a solar cell section here, this rectangle, and you count the bus bars, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 bus bars across here. Each one of these sections are much smaller than over here. But does this really even matter? Well, according to my research, more bus bars on solar panels should increase the energy efficiency and output of these panels, and it does that by reducing the electrical resistance in the panels. Also, having more bus bars is supposed to improve the durability of the cells and helps prevent micro cracks. So the lifespan of the higher bus bar panels should be longer. So overall, more bus bars should be a positive, but let's go ahead and dive into some real world test results. So first of all, we need to have a baseline, just a base production and a pretty ideal situation on what these panels can produce as compared to their rating. So I set each one of these three panels out on a white concrete patio and I put it on that concrete specifically hoping that you get a little bit of reflection to help with the bifaciality of the panels. It was a pretty mild day. It was actually a little bit under 80 degrees and with that being said this budget panel was actually able to put out in my test 102 watts. So a little bit over the rated 100 watt output of the panel. This panel actually had the highest percentage as compared to the Bouge RV panels. When it comes to the 200 watt Bouge RV panel, once again, that baseline, in that same situation, this panel was able to put out 180 watts, which is 90% of its rating. 
and the 300 watt Bouge RV panel was able to put out 290 watts, which is like 97% of its rating. So right off the bat with no shading, with a pretty ideal situation, this budget panel did very well. This was first place when it comes to the percentage as compared to its rating. This was second place, and this was third place. Now, with that being said, we need to do a lot more tests than just that. So, I also put this through a heat test. So, the Topcon solar cell technology here should do better in heat when these panels heat up. Solar panels, when they get really hot, have a little bit less efficiency than when they're at a more ambient temperature. So, I um, had two different days. The first day was that mild day when it was just a little bit under 80 degrees. I let them sit out in the sun and get as warm as possible and then I tested the efficiency of the panels that day. And with the inexpensive panel here, I was able to get 94 watts out of it after warming up on that, up once again, under 80 degree day, which is 94% of its rating. With the 200 watt Bouge RV panel, I was able to get 168 watts, which is 84% of its rating. And with the 300 watt Bouge RV panel, I was able to get 288 watts on that day, which is 96% of its rating. With that being said though, that wasn't really a good example of a hot day. So I waited until another day that was over 100 degrees and I did the same test. And in that test, the results were obviously different because the panels got quite a bit hotter. So on that hotter day, this budget panel put out 78 watts, which is 78% of its rating. The 200 watt Bouge RV panel put out 142 watts, which is 71% of its rating, and the 300 watt Bouge RV panel was still able to put out 247 watts, which is 82% of its rating. So in both of those hot panel tests, the 300 watt Bouge RV panel did the best, the budget 100 watt panel did the second best, and the 200 watt Bouge RV panel did the worst. I also tested the performance of these solar panels on a cloudy day at two different points in the day to see how much percentage of their rated capacity they could put out with an overcast. So that particular day was around 97 degrees Fahrenheit. And it wasn't insanely thick clouds, but it was definitely cloudy. And at the first point of the day, which was around 4 p.m. or so, the budget panel was able to put out 30 watts, which is 30% of its rating on a cloudy day. The 200 watt Bouge RV panel was able to put out 57 watts, which is 28.5% of its rating. And the 300 watt Bouge RV panel was able to put out 110 watts, which is 37% of its rating. And then later on that day, a little bit after 5 p.m., it was a little bit more cloudy and the sun angle had changed quite a bit. So it was definitely less ideal. I tested the panels once again, just for another set of data. And at that point, once again, not very ideal. Sun angle, not good, cloudy day. This panel, this budget panel was able to put out nine watts, which is 9% of its rating. The 200 watt Bouge RV panel was able to put out 15 watts, which is just seven and a half percent of its rating. And the 300 watt Bouge RV panel was able to put out 30 watts, which is 10% of its rating. Okay, so all three of these panels, as I mentioned, are bifacial panels, and you can see they don't have any um, cover here on the back, so light can be absorbed in the back of the cells here. In order to test that, I flipped these panels upside down to see, as compared to the front rating, how much of the capacity I was able to get with the solar panels flipped over. Interestingly enough for this test, the budget HQST panel did the best. It was able to, from the back side, flipped over, it was able to flip over to produce 75 watts, which is 75% of the rating. The 300 watt Bouge RV panel did the second best with 223 watts, which is 74% of its rating, pretty close to the budget panel. And the 200 watt Bouge RV panel did the worst at 138 watts, which is 69% of its rating. The next really important test is a partial shade test. So with a standard solar panel, like this one, this 100 watt panel, if you shade just a portion of that panel, even a somewhat small portion, the output of the panel goes down dramatically. But the two Bouge RV panels have a cool technology built in. This is actually, this 300 watt Bouge RV panel is actually two panels in one in a sense. So this is a 150 watt panel, and this is a 150 watt panel. It's separated here. Same thing with the 200 watt 
Bouge RV panel. 100 watt section here and 100 watt section here. What that allows for is you can actually shade a good portion of either the top or the bottom and the section that's not shaded should be able to still put out up to 100% of its rated capacity. So in order to test this, I put these panels through some partial shade tests and here are those results. Now I'm not going to take the time to go through every single one of these results, but you can see in the clips I'm putting up here that I shaded various sections of each panel and the table that I put up there shows the results. Obviously the HQST budget panel here, you could see that the output dropped dramatically just shading a portion of that panel. But the Bouge RV panels performed as I would expect because of the technology I mentioned where it's really kind of two panels into one. I was able to shade a good portion of the top and still get a decent amount of production out of these solar panels. Okay, with that being said, let's come to really a conclusion. Are the Bouge RV panels worth the extra cost or should you just go with a budget panel? Well, there's a little bit of a nuanced answer here. So if you have a completely sunny area and there's no obstructions and no shade, this HQST budget panel did extremely well. However, since the performance warranty is non-existent, they do claim that it should last 30 years with production, but they don't actually warranty that and the warranty is only five years. Of course, it's less expensive, but you're, you're, you are not getting a guarantee there. So there is that to consider. Also, we'll see. I mean, the longevity of this less expensive solar panel may not be as good as these two. I'm not going to be able to cover a long-term use case scenario here in this video, but that's something to consider with the 10-year warranty on these two Bouge RV panels and the 30-year production guarantee. That is important. So that's something to consider. Now, this 200-watt Bouge RV panel was actually somewhat disappointing. It is less expensive per watt than the 300 watt Bouge RV panel. And I'm not sure exactly why there was such a drastic difference in performance because they both have N-type cells and Topcon technology built into them. But for whatever reason, this solar panel here performed much better. So if I were setting up a system right now, this one I can recommend. I like this unit. It performed extremely well. Yes, it's a little more costly, but it seems very impressive. The performance was very good. If you're looking for a really good budget setup, this looks like a good unit as well. Um, for the price, if you're willing to take a little bit of a chance on this unit, um, you know, reviews are mostly good, but there are some mixed reviews on Amazon. I don't know if the quality control is quite as good, obviously, as something like the Bouge RV panels. But if you're willing to take a little bit of a risk and you want a budget panel, I mean, this isn't bad. But I really was much more impressed with the 300 watt Bouge RV panel than I was the 200 watt Bouge RV panel. With that being said, I am going to put affiliate links for each of these panels in the video description. And if you purchase any of these panels using the links I provided, I do earn a commission off of your purchase at no extra cost to you, which does help support this channel. And in addition to that, I'm going to put a discount code for these Bouge RV panels in the video description as well. So you can save a little bit extra off of whatever the sell price is at the time when you go to make your purchase. With that being said, I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you'd like to see more solar panel comparison videos and more solar content in the future, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you have some brands and some solar panels you'd like me com to compare against these Bouge RV panels and even this budget panel, let me know the brand and the, the model number, etc. And I will look into doing that on a future video. Well, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.